What's up you guys? I'm out here in the wild, in my favorite environment, wade fishing. I'm out here, I'm in some grass flats. I've got my two poles, I've got my spinning tackle, I've got my fly rod. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to kind of dissect and more like wade fishing, kind of like a how-to instructional on wade fishing, how to dissect some spots, how to find some trout. We are in the thick of trout season right now. And right now I've got an incoming tide and I've got these uh, like creek mouse all around me and I'm in my favorite environment. I'm in a marsh flat. Reds, speckled trout, could be a flounder still lingering around here somewhere, but it's probably gonna be a lot of speckled trout. I'm up here in Virginia and um, it's a beautiful day. It's like 70 degrees, early October. And uh, I'm gonna do some less talking and more fish catching. All right, here we go. Okay, so one of the first things that I like to do is just the popping cork works ideal. Now this video that I'm doing for y'all today is more or less kind of like a 101 inshore wade fishing tutorial. Um, so you guys see me fishing a lot with the popping cork. I know, sorry, it's kind of played out. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot more lures and challenges and fun stuff, but for just this video's purpose, I'm just gonna talk to y'all about really like how I got into wade fishing and what really got me into wade fishing, these popping corks. The reason why I like the popping cork, especially in this shallow water, is because um, it just keeps the bait above the grass. Um, I also like to use just a normal jig head. I'll leave a description of some other baits, like a chatter bait, a spoon, and um, even like a mirror lure suspending bait um, can work really well. But just for today, I'm gonna just kind of talk to y'all a lot about just basics of weight fishing. Okay, so the first spot that I came to is, this is a point. We've got a creek. I feel like I'm in Vietnam right here. <laughs> okay, so we've got a creek right here. Let me point the GoPro down a little bit better. Okay, we've got a creek right here. We've got main body out here. And the channel actually runs right along this grass edge. So a lot of these trout are gonna be pushing bait fish right up against the grass edge. By the way, I'm fishing a Z-Man shrimp today shrimp it's the easy shrimp or shrimp z here we go fish on okay actually not a bad size trout Okay, first fish of the day. Let this guy go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep working my way down and casting up the current, getting as close as I can to the grass. There we go, fish on. Pretty good head shakes. Not a bad trout. Come in here. He'll be right at keeper size. Not too shabby. On the shrimp, that was a spot that I definitely would have marked on my phone if I was looking at this as a satellite image. So what I am doing, I know that on a satellite image on Google map, you can tell when you have a more light colored um, piece of water and then it's like marked by like a darker color piece of water the darker color on google maps is obviously going to be the deeper water you have any current and you have like shallow water deeper water what that's going to do is that's going to act as like a byway a highway really for bait fish and really for the predator fish the predator fish are just going to be cruising up and down it just you know picking off of any of their forage coming in with the tide. All right, y'all, I wanna take a second and just pause this video real quick. And I want to make this a very effective tutorial for y'all. Um, so what I'm gonna do, instead of just rolling through me talking to the GoPro and taking you guys through my one 
session that I had wade fishing, which I caught a bunch of trout, but I wanna make this an epic wade fishing tutorial that really helps y'all out for just wade fishing in general, not just for speckled trout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show y'all some clips through my footage library over the past few years of different scenarios and kind of breaking those down for y'all to just give y'all a solid tutorial and I felt like that'd be a better way for me to do this video. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show y'all some different scenarios, how to break those down, and maybe some of the different fish and species of fish that y'all can target, some of the baits and all that. By the way, these are flowers that I bought for Christy today. So to all the husband, wives, boyfriend, girlfriends out there, get yourself some flowers for your significant other and tell her that you love her. So, all right y'all, I'm gonna go ahead, continue this tutorial and help y'all catch some more fish, wade fishing. All right, here we go. Okay, so this is the first spot that I'd like to show y'all. This is a really shallow, uh, flat that's about a man it's almost like a square mile flat but it has these little creek mouths um, and as you can see I'm tied up right now up to the grass line at the um, entrance of a creek mouth at the mouth of a creek I'm at a creek mouth okay so now that I got that straight I'm on the side of the grass and as you can see also like right off the grass, it drops off to like waist deep water. So I caught this flounder right here and I caught it, as you can see, I caught it off of a popping cork. So here I am, same spot, same day, wind picked up. And as you can, you can get a little bit more of a feel for how like kind of big of water that I was fishing. So wade fishing can get a little intimidating because you don't have a boat and you have so much water sometimes to cover. But I like to kind of go more towards the structure, the grass lines. And so, again, just where you have um, right up against the grass lines, um, using a popping cork for flounder is highly effective in the waist deep water. This was actually one of the best flounder that I caught all year in shallow water. And this one went for about 22 inches. Um, so it was definitely a stud of a flounder that was caught in like knee to waist deep water. So that's kind of the first spot that I want to show y'all is the shallow water right up against the grass lines at the edge of a creek mouth. This is the second spot. So this is a different day of fishing. And, um, this was me, I'm walking to casting up against this grass line and I'm standing on an oyster bar. So this is a grass Island. And so the kind of the two main things that stand out to me in these two spots is they have, um, points of interest that stick out and those are creeks and just areas that water flows through. So like a creek, a point, or a grass island. That's an area that sticks out, that fish are going to be attracted to, that they're gonna adhere to. So I started casting along the grass line, and then I went to casting um, actually out into the open water and hooked up into this nice red. And let's go ahead and hear this beautiful sound of drag. Oh yeah, that's a drum. Oh yeah, come on, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a beautiful sound right there. So anyways, um, when you are working those areas, those are kind of the um, first things that I would offer to y'all is number one, try working right up along the grass line in areas of interest that stand out a creek mouth, a point, a grass island. So maybe cast up against that grass line and then you can fan cast like I was doing right here and kind of 
working your way towards casting off the, you know, right in line with the grass line. And then maybe like cast one that's like a little bit off the grass line, like 10, 15 yards off. And then you steadily work your way out to where you're just casting out into open water. So picked out this beautiful over slot drum right here. Um, so as you can see where Christy's standing, she's standing like at the entrance to a Creek and you can even see where the water flow is, you know, flowing into that Creek. And that's where these predator fish are coming in to feed on that. Um, forage the bait of these predator fish, um, crabs love to burrow themselves and kind of come right in all this marsh area so you've got fiddler crabs blue crabs stone crabs and those are all examples of like crustaceans um, that fish are all going to be feeding off of and right here we've got this grass is starting to flood that creates one of the best fishing scenarios in inshore fishing when you've got a flooded kind of marsh area um, when this fills with water redfish will actually swim through this stuff see it on youtube videos and everything on the internet you can look at these like epic videos of like shallow inshore red fishing and you'll see as a redfish come through they move the grass just like bass just like bass do in lily pads okay so the next section that i want to talk about is after i just kind of broke down like high tide and you know where i like to work for high tide up against grass lines at low tide it's pretty simple actually i like to go back towards casting into open water into the potholes into just you know you can't see this but there's areas that i'm fishing in right now this is actually the same spot where i caught that flounder but i'm just fishing in the middle of that flat so it's like waist deep water in the middle of the flat and christy and i we were just blind casting out there so we were able to pick off a bunch of puppy drum flounder um right here so that's what i would recommend uh when you're wade fishing um, also when you are working, um, these flats, um, in the cloudy weather, uh, these fish, because fish don't like to be like sometimes sunny weather, um, can actually make fish a little bit more skittish, uh, with cloudy weather, as you can see, there's also some nice trout stacked in here too. So you're going to have redfish, trout, and flounder all stacked kind of on the outside of those flats. Um, but yeah, so in cloudy weather, that's like epic shallow water wade fishing conditions as well. Not to say the fish won't bite in uh, sunny weather, but the, um, you know, cloudy weather definitely bodes really well. This is the second area that I like to target for low tides. Um, so the current is ripping out. This is an outgoing tide. It's low and outgoing. And so what I was doing was actually casting up against the grass line because there was deep water up against that grass line right there. This is another spot right here, low and outgoing tide. So the tide is pushing out um, from behind me in front of me and there's a drop off right in front of me as you can see it. And it was literally like shooting fish in a barrel because the predator fish were just waiting for all the bait fish to come out from the shallow water as the tide was pushing them out and they were just stacked up in that deeper water waiting um, for any of the bait fish to come down. Cause as you can see, the tide's ripping out and going out to the bay underneath that bridge right there. So um, that was an area that, you know, I targeted and was able to um, do really well catching tons and tons of speckled trout. So Hopefully that helps kind of break down a little bit of my thought process of certain areas that I like to target and kind of my thought process for weight fishing.